good morning everyone uh, my name is sumesh manjunath i am a phd student under professor huda aljimi from emirates tech group uh, today i'll be the session chair for the uh, session crypt analysis technique attacks countermeasures and probable security uh, before we get into this i would like to thank the general chair for uh, allowing me to be the session chair thank you very much uh, so the first talk today will be on passive triangulation attack on override uh, it will be presented by uh, uh, shyamurthy Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Sham. This is a joint work with my professor, Srinivas Vivek. Our work is titled Passive Triangulation Attack on ORIDE. So this is basically an uh, attack on the protocol, ORIDE protocol, which is a uh, ride, ha ride sharing, uh, 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 privacy preserving ride uh, hey, uh, sh sharing protocol. And uh, we have uh, found a few uh, security holes in the protocol. And uh, this uh, attack is about that. So RHS, you know, as most of you have used, uh, is, uh, is a very popular uh, service, you know, for uh, hailing rights. Um, there are, you know, uh, as you can see here, a lot of uh, st statistics in terms of a huge growth and everything, and a lot of convenient features also in terms of payments and reputation ratings and etc. So the, there are three entities, as most of you are probably very much aware. Uh, you have the service provider, the either like Uber, Ola, etc. Uh, riders who hail the ride, and then drivers who provide the services um, for RHS. So with so much of popularity, you know, you have uh, issues with respect to uh, privacy. Um, RHS not only collects information upfront, it also co collects information about, you know, uh, pick up, drop locations, uh, the time of travel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you have probably seen in the media also, there are uh, many um, uh, news uh, pointers which actually give uh, uh, leakage of uh, information which has led to a different problems that as we can see here. Uh, so ORA, it is one of the uh, early uh, privacy preserving protocols um, uh, which was presented uh, in USNIC Security 2017 by Fam et al. A fairly uh, well cited uh, work. Um, it provides uh, uh, the RHS services by hiding the locations and identities of the drivers and riders uh, from the SP. Uh, so this is basically a, a semi-honest setting. Um, yeah, and then, you know, it also provides for accountability, traceability, and lots of good features uh, as a complete solution for RHS. So it uses uh, an SHE scheme, um, and then, you know, and then it computes the Euclidean distance between the riders and the driver and picks the shortest. I'm going to go slightly more into the protocol uh, in the next slide. So a rider you know, who wants to uh, use a ride will, uh, will, pick, uh, will pick a public uh, key and a private key uh, pair. And it would send the public key and then the encryption of its location to the service provider asking for a ride. The SP would broadcast it to the drivers in the zone of uh, the of the ride of the rider, and uh, it would uh, uh, you know broadcast the public key to the different uh, drivers, and they would encrypt their locations using the public key of the rider, and send them to the service provider. Um, so in this case, you know they are using an SHE scheme. I think it's the BGV scheme that they use. Uh, it's a homomorphic uh, encryption scheme. It's a some it's a somewhat homomorphic encryption scheme which will support you know, a limited number of additions and multiplications homomorphically. Uh, the SP would then uh, you know, uh, uh, compute the Euclidean distance between uh, lock R and the lock DIs of all the different uh, drivers. As you can see here, I hope you can see. And then you know, it would send all of these uh, Euclidean distances in homomorphic encrypted form to the uh, rider. So the rider would uh, uh, decrypt the distances because it has the secret key. It would sort and then select the nearest driver. The whole point here is that because of the fact that SHE, uh, the sorting and, uh, the, and the, uh, the search and the sort uh, algorithms using an SHE is of high depth. So therefore, you know, it's very hard to basically use SHE uh, efficiently for these operations. 
therefore, the writer would basically uh, sort on the plain text after decrypting the distances. It would pick the uh, smallest, uh, the uh, yeah, the smallest value and the nearest driver, and uh, inform the SP, and then the write is completed over there. So uh, from the Oride's paper, the uh, what it wants to preserve is basically the location of the identities or, and the locations of the riders and the drivers with respect to the service provider. Um, but then they also look at privacy of the drivers with respect to an adversary rider. So, so what they say is that you know three riders can collude and perform a triangulation attack in order to uh, get the location of the participating driver or drivers. And then in the same paper, they also provide a countermeasure for this triangulation attack and give for two kinds of uh, countermeasures. One is basically a financial penalty, which we are not so much concerned here. What we are more concerned or interested is it would basically permute the uh, list of the driver's indices uh, for each ride request. So what this means is that the colluding riders, in this case the three riders, would not be able to correlate the distances of the values that they have received from the various uh, drivers. So this, they say, will effectively thwart the attack by, you know, by these three colluding writers. What we say in our attack is that this uh, claim is uh, not so true, in the sense that uh, we show a location harvesting attack uh, on the protocol by using the triangulation method and we use four honest but curious uh, riders. They collude amongst themselves. And then they are able to recover the locations of the uh, participating drivers. Um, and our attack does not depend on the topology or anything of the area. And as, as I mentioned here, uh, the permuted distances, just as the protocol would give, is what the, uh, the riders would receive. So in this case, the driver uh, location privacy uh, claim of ORIDE is completely compromised. A uh, bit more details on this. Um, four uh, colluding honest but curious adversaries uh, are located far away inside the zone. They issue uh, a ride request almost simultaneously. There is no requirement of uh, the time requirement here, but almost simultaneously. And for n, n responding drivers, each adversary uh, a rider would receive n requests, uh, sorry, n responses in completely random permuted order. Um, so basically, what uh, each adversary would do is draw a circle of the of all the n distances that it has received. Um, that is what I call as an adversary circle. And two adversaries uh, with their circles would basically get two n square points for when they intersect all their n circles uh, amongst one another. And two other adversaries will filter in the points that lie only on these uh, circles. So that will exactly give us n points. And those n points correspond to each of the exact n number of drivers who have, uh, who have responded to the ride requests. So our algorithm is cubic in the number of drivers. Sorry, this is a very uh, clumsy picture. But this is basically the, the red dots that you see here are the locations of the um, adversary riders, and the blue points that you see here uh, are the four, four or are the three drivers that has been uh, that uh, we have been able to uh, derive out of this. So that was the first part of the paper. Uh, now for the second part. Uh, in uh, 2021, uh, SAC there was another attack uh, for location harvesting uh, on the ORA protocol by Kumar Swami et al. Um, and they also use an honest but curious uh, rider, but then they look at the topology of the network, uh, of the, of the, and, the, and the geography of the road, and the, and, the, and the topology of the road network of the area, and then they are able to, um, uh, you know, what do you say, uh, get about 50% of the number of uh, drivers that who respond in the zone. So they also, in the same paper, suggest a countermeasure for their attack. And, uh, and they show that that countermeasure helps with the, um, the attack, of their attack. So what we call here as the noisy ORAID is the countermeasure suggested by, by, the, by the protocol. So what, uh, what happens here is that in this case, uh, in response to a ride request, the driver at its uh, actual location D would not send her actual location, but instead 
would pick a random location d prime, which is at a distance at most r from itself. Uh, it's a random, uniform random location around itself, and send that location. So this r is predetermined by the sp. Um, and the value of you know, d prime is less than or equal to r. Uh, sorry, the distance between d prime and d is less than or equal to r. So what they say is that by this uh, method, um, they are able to show that the anonymity is preserved to a large extent, but there is a slight reduction in the accuracy of driver selection. So our next part gives an attack on the noisy override protocol, wherein uh, <coughs> we use a slight variation of the triangulation method. Uh, and in this case, the adversary is provided not only with the permuted distances, but these are noisy distances, as I mentioned previously. Uh, we use a brute force attack. And we use 12 honest but uh, curious adversaries. Earlier, we were using four honest but curious adversaries. Here, we use 12 of them. And we are able to obtain uh, between a quarter to 50 percent, you know, 50 percent of the number of, respond, uh, of, the, of the drivers responding to the right request. Our attack is completely independent of the topology or the encoding scheme. Of course, the consequence, as you can see, is that the, the location privacy of the drivers are compromised. Uh, so 12 uh, colluding uh, honest but curious adversaries participate. And they issue, again, you know, a request almost simultaneously. And the, and the requests are indistinguishable from any other normal write request. There is no difference. Um, so in response to the write request, a driver will pick a random point, as I mentioned, and would send that, uh, the, the encryption of that location to the SP. And the SP would, you know, uh, uh, would compute the distance and so on and so forth, as I mentioned in the protocol. Uh, so for n responding drivers, again, n noisy distances are received um, in random permuted order. So this is a, a quick picture. I hope I can explain it in some form. So there are, I see, I, I have mentioned here three adversaries who are located kind of far apart from one another. Um, so the blue dot uh, is the driver's actual location. It would pick a random location within that uh, dashed circle here, which is of radius r. Um, and then uh, using the n distances that the adversaries have received, they would draw their n circles. But in the earlier case, we would have a perfect intersection of the circles, and the uh, intersection would give the exact location of the driver. But in this case, we would not be able to get an exact intersection because these are all noisy values. And it will be, but we would get an intersection which is kind of far away from uh, the actual location that, uh, that uh, the driver. Um, it, so what we have seen is that the bound on that would be a value of 2r, where r is the uh, radius of the dash circle that uh, I have drawn here. And once an intersection point is obtained for two adversaries, um, it would basically draw a circle of uh, 2r from that point in the intersection of points of the two adversary circles 1 and 2. And then all the adversary circles would you know, use their circles. It's basically a brute force method of drawing circles for each of the n, n values that they've got. Uh, and, then, you know, and then we pick the circles wherein we have an intersection of their circle with the red circle. So that's basically a very high level uh, picture of our attack. Um, uh, sorry, this is fair amount of uh, whatever I have mentioned right now. Um, the only uh, takeaway is that you know, we filter out points which do not intersect with uh, any of the adversary, adversary circles. Um, we pick one set, you know, one and two, and then use the other circles to filter out. And then we repeat that. We pick you know, some random three and four, and then, uh, and then do the same operation for the other set of circles. So this is to be able to filter out as many number of noisy points uh, that are possible. Our, our algorithm, again, is uh, cubic in number of drivers. Um, that was right. So experimental evaluation. We looked at zone sizes of uh, 100 kilometers square and 25 kilometers square. So this is uh, uh, kind of what the uh, the ORAID protocol also uh, had in their paper. Uh, so we looked at perturbation radius, uh, different ADA values, radius values. Uh, so this is basically what was given by the attack paper of noisy ORAID. 
um, which is uh, what they had mentioned in their paper. So the value of zero, which means there is no perturbation, that corresponds to the original O8 protocol. Uh, the R values are in line with the three. Um, we looked at different number of adversaries, 4, 8, 12, and 16 in this case. So what we found out was that uh, with 12, we are able to filter out a good percentage of noisy values. But with 4, 8, and probably 16, 16 was probably not very useful for us. But 4 and 8 also were not doing their job properly. 12 was the optimum number that we were empirically we were able to determine. So we used uh, Sage Math code. It is, uh, our code is available uh, for uh, accessing. So in the O8 case, we are able to uh, uh, recover exact locations of all drivers, 100%. And it takes about you know 100 sec uh, what about, you know, 11 seconds for about 100 uh, drivers. Uh, in the noisy override case, because of the added noise uh, that is present as per the protocol, we are able to recover between 25 to 50 percent. Uh, the runtime is about you know five, five six minutes uh, for about 100 uh, drivers. Uh, so our recovery is 25 percent uh, in the case of you know 100 meter uh, uh, R the perturbation the, the R value. 25 kilometers zone size and the number of drivers 100 and 50 percent for the other thing. Uh, when you have a large number of drivers in a small zone, the density is high, and you know our uh, filtering mechanism does not work as effectively. So therefore, our uh, recovery rate is small in that case. So we did 20 runs uh, per uh, combination per zone. Um, so we basically will be able to pick a value which is at a distance. Uh, after we get the, the okay, our algorithm will up, uh, output n values. Uh, we don't know, so we have no idea what those n values are. So we basically do a pro, uh, post processing of these n values, to, and then pick uh, which are values that are actually are a distance of 2R from valid some valid driver location. So our success recovery percentage is basically number of valid locations divided by the maximum of uh, n or n. N is basically the number of participating. Uh, uh, drivers and n is basically what the algorithm has output. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the small n and the capital n. So we probably will be able to get a much uh, better percentage if we have a much, you know, probably a sophisticated attack rather than just the brute force that we do at this point in time. A quick summary: um, <coughs> uh, our attack, you know. We are able to, uh, on the override protocol, we are able to uh, obtain 100% of um, the locations of the, of, the, of, the of the drivers. In the case of uh, attack of three, the noisy override, they are able to pick about 50% or so of the drivers. Uh, they look for the topology information, and then they, are, they also, also have to look at the integer encoding um, of the locations. But we, we, have, we are completely oblivious of any of those things. Uh, coming, back, uh, coming to the comparison between our paper and attack on uh, noisy and then ORAID protocols, the ORAID proto uh, paper by itself, you know, uh, in the paper they give, as I mentioned, the countermeasure. Uh, uh, in our attack, um, on the ORAID protocol, the exact distances are permuted. On the uh, noisy ORAID case, the, per the perturbed distances, the noisy distances, are randomly perturbed, uh, are permuted by the SP given to us. So possible countermeasure solutions, uh, the driver can vary the value of R for every response. Um, but that is, again, determined by the SP. So the protocol has to undergo some changes, which might have some adverse effects on the uh, closest driver selection, which will, will have to be evaluated. And uh, we may have to you know, modify our attack to look at the largest value of R. So that might result in uh, reducing the efficiency of our uh, recovery. Um, we also see if uh, mobile drivers uh, can be caught in this case. Um, typically, a driver looking for a ride would not be traveling very fast. So I'm hoping that the person would be traveling at about maybe 25 kilometers per hour, which translates to you know, seven meters per second. And you know, that is about 10 second response from a ride, a ride request to a response. That will you know, translate to about, uh, about R of 75 in the noisy override attack that we have. So our attack basically would be able to uh, be applied exactly onto the mobile driver situation. Uh, quick conclusion. Um, so the takeaway that I see is that a system may seem extremely secure on paper, but unless it is actually 
put into practice and evaluated, you know, only then we will be able to probably you know, find out issues that might be uh, hidden from the perspective of uh, on, on paper what it might seem. Um, our attack may be uh, applied to other cases wherein similar uncorre uncorrelated values, not only distances, values may be used for privacy preservation. Uh, we are completely uh, based on heuristics. So if there is some sort of an analysis that can be done, uh, mathematically possibly, and then you know, we may be able to uh, have a correlation between the various parameters that are involved in the, uh, in the problem. Uh, we use a brute force method and maybe a Better method uh, may be useful uh, in this case also. Uh, these are the references and the images. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question about the countermeasure of uh, adding noise yes. to the uh, distance. Mm. Um, be Assuming that the drivers are stationary, yes. you are allowed to uh, ask again and again the same question, and you are going to get uh, numbers which are uh, the correct distance, yes. exact distance, uh, plus and minus uh, uh, randomly chosen yes. noise. Yes. So you just average out the noise uh, from multiple queries, and then you go back to a situation in which it's not noisy. Isn't it a simple way to overcome Noise with repeated questions? Yeah, so basically this, um, yeah, this comes back to the k-anonymity problem that has kind of been uh, studied well in different contexts. So that was what was applied to this uh, protocol as well. And uh, I agree that you know, it is possible, but then given the value of r and given the number of, uh, so the, okay, the protocol, the ORATE protocol actually also has a method wherein uh, you can make a request and then, you know, it's basically a write request, right? You make a write request and cancel the write request. And the SP has an idea of, you know, uh, the write requests are coming from somewhere. It can do some sort of a throttling of some of these things. So the protocol uh, by itself has some mechanisms to thwart the mechanism. But I agree that from a mathematical perspective, I agree your, 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 your point is very, very, very valid. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Yeah, hi. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. I wanted to ask you, so how did you compute the distances? I mean, did you assume a kind of radio propagation model or do you have already this kind of distances? Because this one is a three lateration attack. So you collect uh, more than three uh, yes. distances and yes. after that you are able to localize the... Yes, yes. So these are Euclidean distances, okay? Right? So basically, uh, the protocol would expect the, the participant to send an encryption of his or her location. So it's basically a XY coordinate point. Right? So it would send its, uh, the encryption of its location to the SP. Right? And the SP would then compute the distance. The, um, okay. the rider would send his or her distance to the SP. The driver would send his or her dis uh, sorry, the points to the SP, and then the SP would be able to compute the Euclidean distance between the rider and the driver. So the distances are computed by the SP, right? Based off of encrypted locations of the rider and the drivers. Did it answer the question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 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 And yes. you, did you think about also to adopt kind of algorithms for uh, differential privacy and uh, geo-indistinguishability to yes. solve this kind of problem? Yes, yes, yes. So this was basically, ah, okay. So that uh, the geo-indistinguishability and the canonymity was used by uh, the, pro the protocol of three, actually. Okay. Uh, so that was where, where uh, they used the adding of the noise method to be able to counter, uh, counter as a countermeasure for their attack. Uh, but in this case, we were looking at you know, the attack on the addition of the noise. So we did not have to look at uh, that particular point. I had a question on the, uh, the metric. Yes. So you use the Euclidean uh, distance, but I'm assuming that things like Uber don't use the Euclidean distance, but sort of this, the time it would take the car to get to you, actually. Does the attack change when you change to a different metric? Okay, the reason why Euclidean distance was used was because of the fact that the underlying mechanism is an SHE. 
So computing Euclidean distance is basically a two-depth circuit. And with an SHE, it is easy to do. But you know, in case of uh, maybe, a, I don't know, a, a, a different metric, then the SHE might need a much uh, larger uh, depth, which the SHE will not be able to uh, support efficiently. So the ORED protocol, uh, in turn, used, used ED because of the fact that they use an SHE to be able to compute the distances homomorphically. So it all, it's all tied together. But uh, whether you know, a different uh, metric uh, may not be, I'm not sure, but it might not have an effect as far as the attack is concerned. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, let's thank this. Okay, thank you very much.